Oh, hey, it's me, PC Patient Zero. Hang on, I'll prove it to you. See, what I tell you, it's me. Now I know you're freaking out and in, are in panic mode right now because we are outside. I bet you didn't know that I could go outside. Well, I can. Let's enjoy a little bit more outside, shall we? Look at all of the beautiful things that are outside. Look at flowers. Well, actually, it's buds. But aren't they pretty? And listen to the beautiful singing birds. And that dead tree right there is kind of neat. Let's zoom in. And zoom out. This is the outside. Stared in and wonder, ladies and gentlemen, because in a few minutes, we're going to be talking about Shakespeare. Specifically, Macbeth. Hey everyone, hope being outside didn't freak you out too much. Just a couple of things before we get started. You may have noticed that I still haven't found neck thingy. I've taken to wearing this sash, this red sash, which means I'm a healer now, and if you understand what that means, you're awesome. Also, we're going to be doing two scenes tonight because they're kind of short, which is exciting. We're going to be doing 3-2 and 3-3. Three, three. So there's going to be a lot of murder and a lot of cool stuff like that ahead. Brace yourselves. Act 3, Scene 2 begins with Lady McBee and a servant. Because servants are everywhere. And she asks if Banquo has gone from the court, which we know he has. He went to go riding. And the servant says, I, madam, he returns again tonight. So he's supposed to come back tonight for the big party feast that they're having. But we know what happened in the last scene, so... And then she tells the servant to go get Macbeth, and the servant's like, okay. And Lady Macbeth kind of muses to herself. To safer to be that which we destroy, than by destruction dwell in doubtful joy. She's just feeling a little insecure about everything right now. Then Macbeth comes in. How now, my lord? Why do you keep alone? Of sorriest fancies your companions making, using those thoughts, which should indeed have died with them they think on. Things without all remedy should be without regard. What's done is done. Basically, that entire line just means what's done is done. Stop thinking about it so much, because if we know anything about Macbeth, we know that he has a tendency to overthink everything. And Macbeth is stressed out as well. We have scorched the snake, not killed it. She'll close and be herself whilst our poor malice remains in danger of her former tooth. So he's still worried, as usual, about this whole thing. He's like, we've killed the snake, but she's not really. And he goes on about that for a little while. And then Lady Macbeth says, Come, gentle lord, sleek your rugged looks. Be bright and jovial amongst your guests tonight. Macbeth, so shall I love, and so I pray be you. Let your remembrance apply to Banquo. Present him eminence both with eye and tongue. Unsafe that while we must lave our honors on these flattering streams and make our faces visits to our hearts disguises that they are. He's like, make sure you talk about Banquo so that everybody thinks that he's totally going to come to this feast. And Lady Macbeth says, you must leave this. And Macbeth says, oh, full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife. I love that line. Thou knowest that Banquo and his fleance lives. And Lady Macbeth, but in them nature's copy not in turn. Macbeth, there's comfort yet. They are assailable. Then be thou jocund, ere the bat hath flown his cloistered flight, ere black Hecate summons the shard-worn beetle with his drowsy hums, hath rung night's yawning peal, there shall be done a deed of dreadful note. What's to be done? Be innocent of the knowledge, dearest Chuck. I've always wondered why he calls her Chuck. The best, the best I can tell is that it's a term of endearment of some kind. 
guess it's better than ho. Till thou Apollo deed, come, sealing night, scarf the tender eye a pitiful day, and with thy bloody and invisible hand, cancel and tear to pieces the great bond which keeps me pale. Ooh. Macbeth is being creepy tonight. As we all know, he has sent murderers to kill his best friend, Banquo. Yeah. And after he talks for a little bit more in that creepy way, he notices that his wife is standing there like, Thou marvelous at my words, but hold thee still. Bad things begun, strong themselves by ill. So prithee go with me. And they leave. And now we are on to Act 3, Scene 3, in which enter three murderers. Now you might remember that last time there were only two murderers. There are three this time. Sometimes when my theater does this play, one of the witches is a murderer, pretends to be a murderer, and kind of goes along with it. A lot of the times our witches will also play other characters in the play. The first murderer notices that there's another guy. But who did bid thee join with us? And the third murderer says, Macbeth. Second murderer. He needs not our mistrust, since he delivers our offices and what we have to do in the direction just. So he's like, trust this, this other murderer. He's totally, he's cool, he's cool. He wants to kill Banco as much as we do. Then stand with us. The west gate glimmers with some streaks of day, now spurs the lated traveler apace to gain the timely inn, and near approaches the subject of our watch. The third murderer says, Hark, I hear his horses. Banquo's voice is heard from within. Give us a light there, ho. Again with the ho. I don't... Second murderer, then tis he. The rest that are within the note of expectation already are in the court. So he's like, it has to be Banquo, because everybody else who's supposed to be at the party is already at the party. I'm just going to do this for the murderers. One, two, three, when they're talking. Okay. His horses go about. Almost a mile, but he does usually, so all men do. From hence to the palace gate, make it their walk. Enter Banquo and Fleance with a torch. A light, a light! Tis ye! Stand to it! And Banquo, who has no idea that he's about to be killed. It will be raining tonight. And the first murderer says, Let it come down! And then they stab him and attack him and stab him a lot until he's very almost dead. And, and Banquo's like, Oh, treachery! Fly, good fleance! Fly, fly, fly! Thou mayest revenge! Oh, slave! And then he dies, and his son fleance runs away. Third murderer. Who did strike out the light? Because the torch has gone out. Was it not the way? There's but one down, the sun has fled. We have lost the better half of our affair. Well, let's away and say how much is done. And then they leave. So, Banquo, dead. Fleance, escaped. What's gonna happen next time? Well, you'll just have to watch and find out. But until then, this has been a PC Patient Zero production. Thanks for watching. Look at this, everyone. An abandoned tire. This has got to be art somehow. It's totally art. Look over there, a screen door. On the ground. We are witnessing art. Witness it.